everyone. This is Carol. Welcome to Between the Roles, our Murder Hobo Inc. attempt at a talk show. And I say attempt. Uh, and I'll, say, I'll do the usual. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Uh, find our archives on YouTube. Don't forget check out all the old episodes. Uh, hang out with us on Discord and buy our crap, as Frank likes to say. But it's pretty good crap in our shop. Uh, and I do believe the Discord channel link and the store info is probably somewhere on screen. Um, and without further ado, I want to introduce everybody. Uh, first, let's see, I'll go with Blake. Blake, introduce yourself. Oh, uh, what, what's what's the difference between... Uh, I stepped uh, on his joke. <laughs> Sorry, go. <laughs> no, no, I never mind, never mind. I was, I, was going, I, I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you what the difference between a boomerang and my father was. Uh, it, came, it comes back. <laughs> yeah, the boomerang came back from getting cigarettes. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. That's not horribly dirty. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, that's, anyway, that's unfortunate, but very funny. <laughs> okay, okay, if you want to, if you want to dirty. Classic. Yeah, yeah, but, but, uh. Yeah, I'm Blake uh, Campaigner, uh, son of general son of a bitch. I'm here. Uh, uh, hello, yeah. And our, and, and our joke teller, honestly, I, I, yeah, you're on tonight. I should remember because you're not on a lot of Tuesdays. I should remember to let you get your joke out. Oh, I, I believe you. I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll get it out one way or another. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll get it out. And next up. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Scott. Scott, what are you are Hi, and what you doing gaming? So um, my name is Scott. Uh, my Twitter handle is DM Um I'm a mostly DM, uh, although I play every now and then. Um, I play with these guys. Uh, I've DM'd a little bit, and um, as well as I've been gone, uh, I haven't. This is the first between the roles I've done in probably a couple of months. Uh, I used to be down in Mexico a lot, but uh, starting in March, then they kind of got reassigned back here due to this, um, I don't know, this flu we're having, I don't know what, what it is, but, um, but cause it's, it's, you know, I'm immune, you know, cause I'm a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> I sure you are. <laughs> and that's how we roll down here in Texas, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't wear a mask. That's what you're no, saying. No, that's a sign of subjugation. <laughs> <laughs> but you also live 9,000 miles from your neighbors, so you probably never see anybody anyways. I think 9,000 is an exaggeration, Carol, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, not 9,000, no, but you know, I can't, I can't, I can't reach them with my, I can't reach them with my guns. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> They're out of range. <laughs> They're out of range. It is really good to have you back here. Uh, it it's good to be back. It is good to be back. Oh, so please, 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 please continue to be back. Uh, and David, last but not least, yep. go ahead. D Team David, as I was unceremoniously demoted from the last episode. <laughs> no, 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 no. You promoted yourself. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, I was a victim of my own undoing. So <laughs> uh, anyway, hi, I'm David. Uh, I'm a guest and panelist on the show. <laughs> and uh, yeah, play a lot of D&D &D lately with these guys. So uh, enjoying it. I'm also um, a DM. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, projects, writing projects in the works right now. And Pretty soon I'll be touting those. So, <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm here. So, oh, good luck with that. And when are you going to jam for us? Well, that'll be coming soon. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Here's I think TM. Uh, yeah, just the next time I jam too will be soon. TM. Whenever I can come up with and write the next thing. <laughs> it's, bas it's basically going to be when he says, well, I have something in the works. Oh, okay. So you're free for like three days from now. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had some DM obligations. I had the DM for them before I could ever DM on this show. So why not both? 
All right, so on to our first topic, which is always we like to discuss the games that were played this week, and we had three. Um, you know what? I'm just going to go over one of them briefly because none of us actually watched it. Uh, I've been too busy to watch anything right now, which is unfortunate. Our producer is screaming right now. That would be the Sunday game, um, which I've heard is pretty crazy and hilarious, and it was terrific. Uh, they, the players did a great job. Uh, of course, if you want to catch that, it's in our archives, which are either it's up on Twitch for like a week or two, I don't remember, and it's on YouTube. So look for us there. But without, say, without further ado, let me get What's that, what's that YouTube game. channel again, Carol? What's that? What's that YouTube channel? Like I, it's, it's probably M Hobo. Oh, actually, you know what? It's called Dungeon Master. M Hobo Inc. I look it up under uh, Murder Hobo Inc. and I find one of the videos, and that's how I access it. But it's like Dungeon Master, and it's like I can never find it under that. But if you do, if you put in Murder Hobo Inc., you'll find one of our videos and just click on it, and you'll you'll find the, the rest of it. Um, he may have a tiny URL you know, a uh, link somewhere, but I don't have it in my mind. I'm not, hey, I'm just a guest host tonight. So <laughs> but now yeah. to the actual games, we have players that are here that can explain them far better than when we're just, you know, when we're not playing. Uh, the next one is, first one is episode 105, Urban Encounters. And David and Blake both played. Uh, I'm going to put this to David because Blake also played in the campaign. So... David, go ahead. It's all on me, huh? It all happened. All right. Urban Encounters. Well, you follow the adventure of an uh, intrepid little bunch. Uh, we had a droid turtle. Uh, we had two goth little halflings. We had a warlock and uh, a, a necromancer. <laughs> in, in Murder Hobo Inc. I've noticed that. We have a lot of temperamental goths, a lot of emo little <laughs> We do, and they're little too. Always, always halfling goth emo little oh. son of bitches. I don't know why that is. I play a gnome. No, my goth is a gnome, and no. I think the first goth in the group. I well, think my little warlock well, wasn't really goth. The first goth were Germanic. <laughs> That's, That's, true. True. That's true. That's true. That's true. Read Titus yeah. Andronicus. You'll find out. Don't eat the pie. Anyway, <laughs> so. <laughs> that is so uh, that episode was kind of a kind of a strange episode uh for one it ended early <laughs> not by choice uh second hey, you internet issues yeah yeah we, we had a lot uh, of issues like, like technical early, issues three minutes early yeah three minutes about <laughs> how much okay okay well this episode starts off with uh the um uh, the three-person party entering uh, Cacophony. Uh, that's the city that we've been running one-shots out of. Uh, yeah. We enter Cacophony and we find out that it's during the time of a festival. So after securing lodging, uh, we decide to explore and uh, check out the festival. Uh, as we're making our way to the festival, we dart, dart down a dark alley because that's always you know, a safe thing to do. <laughs> And in there, we find a body, a body that's uh, been murdered. Yeah, a body that's been murdered. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, on closer inspection, uh, we find a clue that we don't follow. And then uh, <laughs> we end up meeting uh, another character there, a little strange guy who's an associate of one of our previous characters uh, by the name of Matthew Makana Haig. Anyway, um oh yeah right, all right, all right. that's enough yeah and he gave us his whole spiel on how reality is just two circles you know flat circles sphere kind of mixing together now anyway um we follow mr mcconaughey <laughs> into the festival where he causes a disruption and within that disruption causes uh um uh, an ogre to to appear uh running around oh, yeah. uh, smashing everything but it really wasn't it was um all illusion uh just so he can score drink free drinks <laughs> so. well and, and i'll go ahead and interject so, that is so like mcconaughey that's just uh -huh. so 
<laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and interject. Uh, what got your attention, if I'm remembering correctly, was I think he was casting surreptitious spells uh, to yes. try and poison you. Yes, and I don't know if we were resisting or what, but nothing ever came of that. <laughs> so, what did you do to him to get him to want to poison you? Uh, I don't know. I think mean, we I never explored that. We interrupted a a murder. <laughs> Yeah, so chances are he was probably the murderer all along, <laughs> murderer all along. But uh, anyway, um, that it, that episode was strange because we had a number of plot hooks that we could have followed. Uh, supposedly there was like a, a vendor insurrection that was going to happen between the Coopers and some other vendors there. We were supposed to eavesdrop in and offer our services. That never materialized. <laughs> <laughs> More things with uh, Matthew McConaughey that never materialized either with that plot hook. <laughs> and then uh, finally, Frank probably had enough and forced us into to an encounter anyway. So basically what happened was there was a show that was opening uh, and the revelers and the festival uh, folk make their way to it. Uh, come to find out there is a performer with a giant cobra that it's controlling through through music. And uh, yeah, our druid decided to take this opportunity uh, to become friends with the Cobra and try to liberate it. So, <laughs> and that's when all the mayhem ensued. Our, uh, our goth little halfling necromancer dropped a fog cloud and that always added to the suspense too with this Cobra circulating through the crowd. We hear a shriek. Something happened. The cobra's fed for somehow, somehow. And uh, yeah, just as we were about to get into it and Blake's character uh, starts wearing the cobra as a boa. Um, yeah, that, that's <laughs> when we of lost its, our of connection. Its own, of its own volition. Of its own volition. So he was just like petting it and stuff like that. So. Didn't bite you? No, man. No, so, no, I went, I, went full, I went full scar from Lion King. Oh, man. I tell you, I was ready to bug out at any time. It's just like I was a genie warlock, and man, I was going to pop in that bottle if that cover was coming out. You man. left your bottle in the, in the room. Did I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the range is. It, What's that, Scott? That, 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 that sounds like fun. That sounds like a lot of weird shit going on. It was a lot of fun, and that pretty much sums up the episode. I'm kind of hoping that we'll get another chance to, to play those characters again and play it out, maybe pick it up from where the festival left off. But it was a lot of fun. I want to at least see where those characters are in a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. Cacophony is interesting because, as Frank described it, it's mirrored timelines. So... Seriously, I want to join you guys with my with with Luna. You know, my goth uh, death uh, grave clerk. Yeah, that we need another half one. The damn goth. <laughs> an necromancer and a that would be and a warlike. That'd be rather interesting. Uh, that's. <laughs> and then we have our non-binary uh, change like that I play. So. Got, oh, was that character? No, he's in cacophony. So. <laughs> oh. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I I do need to have some time at work to listen to some podcasts because I need to catch up on. You this. need to catch up, Carol. <laughs> I mean, I don't tend to watch the ones I'm in, but I was there. So, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, Blake, how'd you like to talk about the campaign where we finally get through the dungeon? Yay! Well, I, I I'll, I'll point out that it was sent. It, it was we. It was pointed out to us in an email afterwards that no, we aren't through. But uh -oh. essentially, essentially, we came close. Can you hear me? Quite. We can hear you now. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I said. I said no. It was pointed out to us in an email afterwards that we aren't technically through yet. <laughs> no, but we're. But basically, I think we've killed everything we're gonna kill there, and it just we have to leave and get along. How, how presumptuous of you, child. <laughs> well yeah frank does have two weeks to come up with something else to throw in there because exactly. you know, this place, this place has been looted already before and we haven't run across them yet 
Well, I think a lot of them got killed. A lot of them were the gnolls that got killed. So, and I think- I, I found one dead gnoll. Really? Well, whatever, something dragged them away. You gotta and run it, into a gnoll lich, watch. No, <laughs> don't make suggestions like that. Frank is watching right now. That's, and that's how he comes up with ideas. He steals them from, from people when they just talk about their greatest fears. It's the, uh, smartest, way, it's the smartest way to handle those situations. All right, go ahead and actually give the, the rundown of what happened. So so picking up where we had last left off after uh, defeating the zombie beholder and uh, having a uh, respite in what was essentially a wizard study that we had found sequestered away in Narnia. Uh, <laughs> that was great. That was a great episode. Uh, we spent way too long... <coughs> trying to deduce the exact layout of this of this place. We found all of the rest of the, uh, or what we assumed to be most of the rest of the uh, entrances to the underground area of this uh, keep uh, from back when it was still functional and defensible. Uh, we had, I don't even think we had any encounters until the main one, did we? Um, uh, no, we did. Oh, we totally did. No, we had the skeletons that came. Mm -hmm. We basically, oh, we got okay. into our Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah, Dewey's axe. Dewey but got his axe. Yeah, yeah, we, we did, we did happen upon a storage, uh, like an old, an old, uh, uh, uh armory, know. uh, lo located That's down right. there. That's right. And, uh, and yeah, there were a couple, uh, animated undead, uh, which were, Pretty well fortified for undead. Uh, yeah, simple, simple, two were simple fun. Undead. And then there were four that came up behind us. Right, that had apparently been so just well, kind, of, kind of in the ground and kind of sprung up as a trap, basically <laughs> left, left, left yeah. as a trap. Uh, dispatched them, but got Dewey got hit pretty hard because he got hit early, and he was. I um, had six hit points. <laughs> he, yeah, but he was down. I know. Yeah, because he wasn't raging, right? Yeah, because he's never, right. never seen him go below half. Yeah, but, you're, not, you're not taking half, and but I mean, he took half of the rest of it, but still, right, right, they yeah. hurt. I mean, that that axe does a lot of damage. Not to mention, the, I believe the ones in the back were using great, you know, great swords. Those hurt, yeah. and I don't have the greatest AC. So let's face <laughs> it, scene is not I, terrible. Which, which, which is why I was trying to insinuate my little self in front of you when you're oh, like, you're fine. I got this. Why do you think it gave you a point of inspiration? I knew that. Uh, yeah. Well, plus I didn't want to blast you with my poison pussy. Yeah, I was about to say, I did not know that's how Perpetua launched poison spray, man, until this no, episode. It's, po it's poison squirt. It's poison squirt. Oh, jeez. So great. So great. And it, it's, it, it's, not the, it's not the only way. It's one of the ways. Because <laughs> typ typically she just looks like a Barbie doll. But it's, it, it can show up if it wants to. It's magic. It's a party um, trick. <laughs> it's a party trick, yeah. Look what I can pull out of my box. <coughs> but it hurts if you get hit by it. Or in it. Or in, oh. oh. Anyhow, uh, so yes, after dispatching that, 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 yeah, that encounter did go on for quite a while now that you mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, it was a tough encounter. It was a lot yeah. tough. The last encounter. I, well, like I didn't, I didn't get hit, and I, I, so I forgot. <sighs> but uh, we, Proceeded on. Dewey did take that axe. Uh, I think we spent some couple couple short rests in there to heal up and uh, uh, one for, for there him to attune, one for him to attune to that. I think we did a prayer of healing. Uh, just all well, part to, of the same hour. We were there yeah, for an hour. Yeah. And we, well, no, because I didn't get the benefits from the prayer of healing because I went to go play a hero. Oh yeah, because we did that in the first ten minutes when you were uh, gone. Uh, finished scouting it. I, I think we have a very thorough understanding of the layout of this place. Uh, found out how we can connect from the top and the bottom. Still have a couple caved in locations that we may or may not explore. I don't think we probably are. I think we're gonna get out of there as fast as possible, but that's just me. Uh, and then ultimately we split up one more time with Dewey going above the last tower and me poking my head down below and I saw something faintly glowing and said oh shit there's something down here I think this is what we're looking for let's go down here uh after oh after his acts of encumberment nearly uh caused <laughs> him to crash through the floorboards it's not uh, really acts of encumberment that was just a joke 
The four but, boards are really weak, which is why he went up by himself. Yeah, which which was again brave of him for doing so. Uh, yeah, but after getting back down there, uh, I think we noticed that there was. It looked like a bone pit. The walls were lined with skulls, uh, bones, just various, looked like some sort of, for lack of a better term, necromantic shrine. Uh, I think uh, someone had the good, the brilliant idea of saying, let's detect magic. And I'm like, oh yeah, sure, I'll do that. And Manise, Manise went into it, I'm like, you save it for healing. I can't heal you. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> so pop that off, didn't see anything, nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, make our way to a basically a tunnel so they're trying to bottleneck any would-be invaders uh, which was had the floor lined with pl pressure uh, plate traps uh, firing off what would have been poison darts but were so old that they were just darts they just uh, did a little damage and that was it yeah they weren't nearly as a did we did a good job of disarming those uh, got to the end of this hallway, see a throne, and I pick up a magical signature behind it coming from a brazier. I may be mispronouncing that. <laughs> brazier. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm walking out of there with a magical purple brazier. That's all I know. <laughs> but uh, kind of put three and three together. Uh, in this throne sits a decrepit skeleton inanimate, still nothing going off. Uh, once we're all in there, flash a flash of necromantic energy, you know, try to get uh, the cleric to, okay, hey, we might need to turn undead here. And before he even has a chance to, him and I believe you were disappeared. I boarded out because we couldn't make a freaking intelligence save. Yep. I was so mad. Oh, I was so mad because I wanted to be in that fight because that was the last fight. But then, it was easy. And, and, and we can talk about that here in a second. But uh, <laughs> uh, we were able to, uh, Dewey was able to pretty much handle it single-handedly while Lucas and I investigated this brassiere. Uh, he, he, he successfully knocked it over and went to go help uh, Dewey. I found what we were looking for. Uh, by the time I was ready to go back and help, I think it was already even dead. So I, I now have a Benoit ball uh, secreted somewhere on my person uh, that I'm told is part of a rob of snatching. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I remember you lying and saying Very that nice. was broke, and I well, was. Yeah, I was trying to make. Uh, I, I was going to knock. I was going to knock this thing over myself, but I'm like, eh, hell, I'm like, I have to give Lucas a little bit of shit for breaking the box in the first place because he keeps knocking shit over. <laughs> Oh, I, nice. yeah, no, but I did it. What I did was I made an inside check. So I feigned being all mad and because I knew you were freaking lying. Right. As, <laughs> and, and ultimately what this thing was, was a crypt thing. Uh, something from the old uh, folios, I think. Right. Fiend folio. Yeah. Um, and something that is something that I, I was reading up on it and something that I think if we were doing this in a different format, it might have been more effective because I was reading up on it. And basically, this thing would try and convince anyone who was not teleported that everyone else was disintegrated. Oh, yeah, that might have. And that, I think that that could have yeah. persuaded us to act in a different way there. So I'm, I, I'm curious to see how, and I, I, I would be curious about Frank's input on that at some point. But I think that that could that had the potential to be played in a much more intimidating way because it isn't necessarily a fearsome creature like as stat wise it's it was pretty much a cakewalk for the two of them but now let's say had dewey been teleported accidentally as well yeah oh no that's yeah. that's the thing is who got teleported yeah two non damn yeah. dealers yeah. really yeah. I mean, I can magic missile, but in reality, I'm, we're going to get to bards, and the fact that I'm a utility character, I will do a little of this and a little of that and buff people up and debuff the enemy. That's, that's mostly what I do. But, um, but yeah, it, because honestly, Dewey probably could have taken it on by himself. Barbarian he, he, he effectively did. Damage, you know. Yeah. 
it, it, and that's really it. He just, just, he would just completely overwhelm it. And um, it would have been interesting, yeah, to see if it tried to convince him that we were disintegrated. That would be funny. But it was getting late. If yeah, I yeah, yeah, that, that, I know that, that was a part of it too. Plus, it, plus it's hard to communicate that with characters when you're all, it, it's difficult to send secret information while keeping the flow of content and everything. Yeah. So. yeah. And I was, yeah. Oh, one other thing I remember that was, I thought, rather amusing, thinking of uh, Chris. Of course, he's playing a cleric. He could have made that skeleton fight so much easier. Oh, if he remembered the first round, oh, hey, I'm a cleric. I think he forgets he's a cleric. <laughs> you don't, don't want to tell people how to play their characters. That was on they He forgot he could turn skeletons or something. I'm not sure. We love it, Chris, but that was that was rather amusing. And mm -hmm. ow. It was a character choice. That's what he made. I honestly felt like it was at the time. I didn't even realize that that was because we didn't know what we were going to be running into, if we'd have time for yeah, rest I mean, to, get, to get that back. I mean, you know, how many we, we knew that there were undead that had been chasing us. I, I thought he was saving it for something that might have been a little bit more. In all seriousness, that actually makes a huge amount of sense because I'll do that too. I mean, they're a bunch of skeletons. I'm not going to throw my highest level spells at them. Exactly. You know? I did throw a bunch because honestly, they are skeletons. They also, unless you have a bludgeoning weapon, your piercing weapons don't do crap. So I use like the one thing that I could use against it, and that was magic missile. Yeah, and it, worked. it was the first time I ended up having to shock and grasp something because I was <laughs> and didn't want to be. Yeah, I know. Well, you stepped and, up. And you, and you better believe I grabbed the shit out of that bone. <laughs> <laughs> and I so, gave it. I gave it the shocker. <laughs> <laughs> you did. But. No. Was a great. That was. It was a fun. <laughs> nice. It, it, it was. It was. I. It was one of the more. Uh, one in the stink. Uh, well, it was all stink because it was kind of rotting. Okay, then. Out of this. I always. It was. It was one of the more enjoyable campaign episodes in in a while. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I I enjoy playing with you guys anyway. So most all of them are enjoyable to me even if things go wrong or well, whatever yeah but i mean it it, it flowed well it, it, we didn't get a lot accomplished but it was it was just a it was it was fun i'm trying to give frank a we little, found a, a little kudos in his absence wait, wait, wait no we got a major thing accomplished we found one of the pieces of the thing we're looking for so well, that I, I, I found i found something that can fit in my vagina and I fit it in my vagina. That like that doesn't happen every freaking episode. You know, that thing was rather large. <laughs> be fitting in there. And I'm it, was about the, it was about the size of a softball. I'm only a halfling. I do wonder also how three piece, how yeah, you've got it already got a little orb. How were there how the pieces why would they do go around it? it, it or? It's basically like it's basically like a scepter is is the description of this of this piece that we're looking for. So we're we're looking for Two parts of a staff, and this is the headpiece. All okay, right, that makes sense. So it was built for that, basically. It's it's the head. I put that. I, I was able to fit in the head. <laughs> it, God. Just a bit. Don't push. I am very, <laughs> very excited to see where we decide to go next with this campaign, uh, especially since my character Taryn has ties in one of those places that she doesn't she really doesn't want to go back to. I and I don't think we have much choice in the matter. No, we don't, and that's why she's going to go back there. And it's whether or not, I don't know, I'm still toying with whether or not how much I tell you guys, how much you I'm might, telling you. You might want to bribe Perpetua into actually being you. No, 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 I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, that's too much. That's too much to dump on you. I suppose that would be kind of funny, but I have disguise self, so, and I have invisibility. I've got ways out. Well, then, yeah, you, better, just, then, you, then you better hope that she doesn't get pissy and decide to be you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever to be, it'll, I'll be highly entertained. Oh, uh, and undoubtedly. So, yeah, undoubtedly. With that, uh, the games were, I think games were great last week. Uh, I said I had a ton of fun in the campaign myself, and I really am excited about where it goes next. Either, yeah, either and, and, and cacophony is always a good time, too. Cacophony is something I, hey, Frank, definitely, I want to play more of. I really like Cacophony. I want to play enough there so I feel like I've earned the right to buy one of the t-shirts that has the, what, 
Cacophony Adventures Guild on it or something like that. Yep. So I've been there once. I want to play. I want to play more. I, I <laughs> like his open. I like him. Love his open sandbox cities. Uh, they're just a ton of fun to play in. Um, but let's actually get to the the main topic of discussion, and that is, of course, one of my personal favorite classes, if not my favorite class, uh, the Bard. <laughs> um, so I get a lot of shit for playing a Bard or a Bards uh, on the show, but really, I think that I, I I love the fact that they're utility characters and could do a bit of this and do a bit of that and uh, can control help control uh, battlegrounds. So um, I know you guys got outlines with questions, but I actually have, have a couple other points of discussion if we get through them all. Um, the first thing I said is, what do you guys think their purpose and place is in a party? Um, and I'm looking for if you can obviously obviously answer, you know, whatever. Come up with something interesting though. Um, I will start with David. Well, um, party face <laughs> is the one thing. That's what bards are great at, um, or supposedly, depending on your dice roll. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, trust me, I've been the victim of really bad dice rolls. <laughs> I play a bard uh, in my regular game, and uh, I take, take uh, persuasion as an expertise. Oh, I did. I still failed. So, really? did you <laughs> yeah. Because uh, what my DM likes to do is do Frank's old move, roll roll a d12 against me. So uh, not quite well. the. Same. But uh, the party face of uh, uh, if you're having a role heavy role playing game, uh, bards are a ton of fun for that. So. All because... right. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I. Oh, I always thought you were finished. Sorry. Go ahead, finish. What you oh, I, I, the last thing I was going to say is, I mean, they're good for anything. So, yeah. Well, maybe not great fighters, but all right. Um, Blake, how about you? Well, I, I, I think you summed it up really well and really succinctly when you said, you know, their, their original intent was to buff and debuff. Uh, that was... You know, you have the bard in the back singing songs to bolster the brave fighter and the paladin and, uh, you know, throwing, uh, throwing comments, all, you know, at the, uh, at the fearsome uh, opponent to try and get, get him unsettled and easily caught off guard. I think lately, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I know that that was the original intention. They didn't have nearly as much utility as they do now. Uh, right now, uh, you can have, I think, some of the most powerful spellcasters as a bard if you build for that. Right. But whether or not you want to wait, you know, it, it's a give and take situation though. If you're gonna go with that, then you're going to lose a lot of the utility that otherwise isn't going to be uh, present in most parties, uh, unless you have someone taking a, you know, like a knowledge cleric or or an, or, or a more, uh, let's say, social subclass of, of like a paladin or something. Um, I I think what I, what I like doing with bards, though, and when it comes to that, I like playing against the meta. Get one that is just you know, get one that has a sailor background and only and talks like fucking Popeye and, you know, is is, <laughs> is 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 just trying to be in the front and be the tank, even though, you know, but just yeah, I'm gonna sing my song. It's gonna be off key and you're gonna fucking like it, okay? Nice. <laughs> You know what? I, I did have write one of the things is I would I'd be interested in hearing concepts, but that's a question for later on. Yeah, uh, I got one. <laughs> DM Pooba, because I love your handle there. DM Pooba, how okay. about your thoughts? So, so I'll, I, will, I will answer your question, then I will give an unsolicited for opinion. That's a <laughs> contrarian position. To answer your question, the role of a bard inside a party is to annoy the fuck out of the DM. That is the role of the of the bard. Now, yes. Let us go back yes. into the origins of the of the uh, bard. 
by referring back to our original player's handbook. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Go, go, go. it's story time with grandpa. Come on, come on. Hey, Bards did not exist and, originally. And, and, and get the fuck off my lawn. Um, they, <laughs> uh, as as an appendix to psionics in appendix two, um, it's a it's a combination of fighters and thieves, and tops them off with magical abilities. Yep. The, the, they must be human or half elven. I, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to go into all the particulars, but the point was is that you had to have these amazing stats, 15 and basically four or five stats, uh, and then uh, 12 in wisdom as well. Uh, you had to do five levels as a fighter, five levels as a thief, and then you were a bard that started you off at first level again, um, and you're gaining druid spells at that point. And 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 really, I, I, I'm not. I, I don't mean to 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 to, to bash no. too much. It's just the point they were supposed to be rare, very very rare. These yep. were traditions of the Norse skalds. They were um, the the one traveling minstrel that uh, that you know could fight and would tell the stories of an entire tribe or an entire continent. And Gene, that Gene, person Gene, would be, Gene Goodall. yeah, yeah, and th that would be like one person on a continent would be a bard, and now everyone's a bard. <laughs> builds for Not them, sure. you know? and, and, and and so, like I said, yeah, I, I'm I'm you know story time with the grandpa and, and get off my lawn, but um, I I my my problem is is that you know the the issue that I have with the bard and where is their utility is. I'm fine if they're a utility player, and I said speaking as a DM, but they do have that battle management, as as you said, Carol. They have that battle management ability, and when you throw a bard, or sometimes you have a party with a couple of bards, it starts to just weigh things in a way that that becomes difficult for for a DM to to be able to basically be able to manage, and it and it throws too many of the things on the side of the uh, of the players they can that they, it just makes it i don't want to say too easy but i want to say almost unbalanced and um um so so that's why to me when i'm on a dm and in, in 5e farts are annoying they're just annoying no i understand why they're fun as hell to play because they are they're they're, they're very fun to play say real quick that i think it's interesting how you were saying that originally they were intent they were they were intended to only learn druid spells and i like that they right. pretty much right. kept that uh, to right. to a large degree, not not exclusively, but and and that was something that just hearing you say that kind of popped into mind that that can also you you can get people stepping on other people's toes too, I suppose right. if you're not careful. Right now, it's 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 an interesting uh, theme that they had, and and I'm glad to see that that it graduated out of the appendix and into its own character class. They really kind of came into their own in like you know three e. Uh, and you know three five and such as that, and obviously in in five they're they're tremendously popular due to their versatility, and uh, and to all the different things you can have, but um, you know you can have at this point a party of a of a of a of a high level of, of a paladin, a cleric, and a bard, and the battle management utility that those three characters, those three classes can play together. In, in my opinion, make it very, very difficult for a DM to come up with compelling and challenging encounters. So that's my, that's my general gripe against bards as a DM, but they're fun as hell to play. I don't know. I don't feel like I'm that OP. <laughs> I really don't um, playing Taryn. I mean- Well, Taryn, Taryn, the way Taryn, Taryn sticks to Though, like you said, the buff and the debuff, she's not going, she's not pulling out, you know, right. uh, you know, she's got her magic missile for, for defense. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, well, offense too. I mean, I want to participate and I want, I like to blow stuff. I, I'm, well, I'm trying to picture her like before the party. because but, right, but you're right in a way, that's her uh, RP wise, sure. That's, that's basically, she basically only kills, and there's reasons for self-defense in, in this particular circumstance. But I mean, I've played other ones where I really do like, I just, also the thing of it is when I started Taryn, that was second ed. So you didn't have your, right. your, your 
the you know it wasn't in a class that came out of we had to get five levels of three classes right right, right. it was that and i mean the reason why i liked it that well a i'm kind of a part of reality i'm a musician in uh, reality so it sort of calls to me anyways as a, as a player um but i i, I yeah i picked basically i built her around okay what would i be if i was a class every everybody should do that once pick it build the character around who you are and who right, you of course and um your best characters will have a bit of you in it in, uh in every single one so um but that's oh, what I did. <laughs> and i said i play also sing and i like i love a lot of the arts and such so it just seemed like a good fit but i also really I, like the second I probably, ed i could I you know, all your spells from you could pick up wizard books books and learn spells so i learned magic missile and, and I, so Neil would say when it came back around to fifth ed and now you've got that thing we can pick a couple of wizard spells or whatever or any kind of spells i yeah. believe you, you can pick cantrips uh, i picked fast, magic, I, believe. I need mirror for obvious but i yet but i picked magic missile because that was such a throwback spell to the to the original version of this character so you, you're, you're referring to um, the, that's why you're referring to the magical secrets yeah, the magical secrets. Magical secrets right? Yeah, exactly. You can pick uh, like two. What, of what was what? What I always thought was 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 nice, and 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 I'll just kind of piggyback on on what you were saying there a little bit, is that being able to pick up spells from other classes is indicative of their supposedly their wide range of knowledge throughout you know all the different things, and this idea of. They're gatherers and explainers and capturers of lore, right? I mean, you know, you 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 have this idea that that a bar is a very well traveled, uh, well read, well learned individual. And uh, one one thing from 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 one e, for instance, is that once you are a bard, you can basically speak fifteen to like twenty languages. You know, before I, I, would, I, would, I would imagine like would would they automatically have history? Proficiency, almost. Yeah, like it, it, exactly. You, know, you, yeah. you, you, you could identify magic items without using the the identify spell, right? I mean, it was it was this idea, and you could charm people. The idea of being able to charm is just your presence could charm, right? You didn't really even have to do anything, basically, right? So, the the, the origins are are fascinating, right? And, and of, of having this type of character, and and I always liked that. I just and, and like I said, this this is a personal unsolicited opinion. <laughs> They're hard for a DM to manage because you have, at, uh, and I'll see, see what Blake has said, he likes to play where they're ahead of the meta. Bards are really easy to meta, really easy to meta gain. I've played in some where they, where the first thing they take, the, the bard takes is Eldritch Blast and they're and, and a Valor bar with Eldritch Blast can just annihilate everything. They're not supposed to. You know, so. <laughs> oh, and I said, I, although when I build characters, it's, I pick things I like. I don't really build powerful characters. Right. Well, I it's build that type character. of power gaming meta stuff. I, 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 I can see how an experienced gamer like Blake can can decide to say I'm going to play this and I'm going to get ahead of the meta and and I'm going to enjoy this instead of saying I'm going to see if I uh, I can find a way to fuck the DM and and a well <laughs> a well constructed bard can do that. Well, well, and, and something else going back to what you were saying from the roots too. How how I don't know if you've uh, with the unearthed arcana they've essentially reintroduced psionics. Correct. And and that's something that I'm currently reworking one of my old characters because our party was fucked anyway. So I'm reworking her to incorporate some of those into it, and it's it's been interesting so far. Let me tell you about how. Well, let me tell you how that goes. I want to I want to keep moving here because sorry. I feel like they're like fifteen or so minutes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, 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 pro no. It's a great see my favorite topic. So. It's, I will say it's a great topic. All right, so the, ne the next thing was, he yeah, had the different, um, what the colleges? Boy, Carol, freaking read. I said I've had a long week. Uh, a <laughs> long week and a couple of days. It's been one day and I've already had a long week. Um, everybody, <laughs> I'd say go around and pick one of you, pick whatever, one college. We're not gonna go through them all. That would just take too long. Pick one you like and explain why you like it. 
Um, let's see. Let's. All right, I'll go in reverse. I'll start with Scott since he was. Okay, so uh, glamour is the one I would say I probably like. Glamour, college glamour. It's it's the the idea of of see because to me that's probably the um the the fame element of it and the way that the upper levels of the bard are are just so innately awesome that they have such such a tremendous you know aura about them that uh that they embody my you know old freaking idea of what a bard is supposed to be and and i'll just say and and i don't have anything else to say about bards because i'm a dm and I don't play bards that often, but when I read about bards and I see about the College of Glamour, I think that's probably the closest. So maybe someone who plays bards can give a little bit better explanation about them on a daily basis or, or <laughs> a weekly basis now they play them in, in, in their campaign. But for me, I always like the College of Glamour. Yeah, that's a, that's a very valid reason too. It, that's, that's a great point. Two uh, words, Derek Zoolander. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm mad, you know, and with that taking that sort of part, that, that is super fun to play. Yeah. You know, kind of see Blake play something like that. That would be, I think you'd rock something like that. You know, I'm going to go to, you know, because I'm changing up the order, I'm going to David next. David, pick which, which is your favorite? Well, uh, Scott took my favorite. But... <laughs> oh, that's why you were reacting. I no, well, let me do one of the uh, a character that I created recently, uh, Calliope, the warforged uh, bard from the College of Whispers. And College of Whispers is it is badass. I mean, it is spooky. It is now. Yeah. Is she actually a Calliope? She should be. I mean, she could be. <laughs> Um, okay, one of the things that you get with uh, College of Whispers is uh, you get a damage ability called uh, Psychic Blades, which uh, basically you just add uh, psychic damage to a weapon attack, which is awesome. Wow. Uh, after that, you get another ability called Word of Ter uh, Words of Terror, and basically that is, uh, that is a Frighten. Uh, condition that you can impose upon somebody and uh, there are different kind of things you can kind of meta with that too you can get them <laughs> to work for you they're so afraid of you they're willing to go out of their way and give you things and you know all for self-preservation of you know you not revealing a secret that they you know that they hide so that's the kind of storyline with this this part uh has access to all your your deepest secrets so uh, uh like uh like, like like how scott enjoys fucking chickens yeah that's it <laughs> uh you also have mantle whispers which is like uh it's kind of on the glam side uh one of the things that it does is that it um when somebody dies within your presence, you can snatch their shadow and with that shadow, transfix it on yourself for an improved disguise self. I mean, they, they actually have to add uh, uh, plus five uh, to their, uh, as a disadvantage for their check or something like that to discern whether it's real or not. So, wow. and then the capstone is, uh, shadow lore which is it's just a better charm person where you're actually in control of another person because of their fear of you revealing their secret so like i said it is a spooky uh subclass but man is it it looks like a lot of fun so that's my favorite a lot of fun oh well, right. it was glam but all right blake how about <laughs> blake like you're, you're you're muted. You're muted. Like. I, I, yeah, I, I saw the little icon. <laughs> uh, but uh, my favorite right now, honestly, goes back to the to the to the UA, and it's the College of Creation. Yes, mm -hmm. um, that's a great one. Which I I really like because at the low levels, when you first get in there, it has the note of potential, which gives your inspiration dice a shit ton of utility, and it it discourages you from hoarding them. Like, I, I feel like that's one of the problems with College of Lore is because you're constantly uh, holding on to those so that you can, for, for, to use for 
for practical reasons because that's how you get your uh, cutting words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so sure. I mean, yeah, you can, but this gives a little bit more utility when you're giving them out and trying to inspire everyone because uh, like it does bonus damage if you use it on an attack roll. Uh, it does, uh, it grants you temporary hit points if you use it on a saving throw and it gives you advantage if you use it on an ability roll. So I, 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 higher levels, you basically just turn into the castle from Beauty and the Beast and that's a little, that's, that's a little, a higher level I'm not such a huge fan of, but for low level, <laughs> just uh, actually giving a, another uh, aspect to that particular, because that's I, low level bards, that's kind of what I, they're there for inspiration. They have some, you know, healing words and inspiration dice. Uh, and I think that that's a very interesting aspect to throw in there to, to make those a little bit more, oh yeah, hey, I do have a bonus action. Let me use it. I, I can give this out and someone might be able to do something really, really cool with that. Yeah. So, well, I did go with lore, um, but that's, it just seemed like that suit the character. I basically, I don't really have a favorite. I be, like colleges or, or any of the other things you pick for classes. A lot of times I'll pick it based on what I'm trying to build. And with her and her history and such, and I figured Laura was the was the probably the most appropriate one to her. I like the fact that she does learn know a lot of stories and a lot of things, and and she did pick because magical secrets. That's right. That's a lore trait. So you know that gave me the way to get you said magic missile into her uh, spell mix. So I said I like to like glamour. Just it's not really her. You know she's. In reality, she's kind of hiding, so she's not trying to draw attention to herself per se. But yeah, she does. That, that, that's the opposite of what a, what a glamour bard is going to do, where they live <laughs> on the attention of others. That's not exactly her choice, um, but the thing of it is that's that. But I just said for something for some reason for this particular character, war just really that's what really spoke to me and uh, said i think the big thing was the magical secrets and getting the extra skills i do like i do like building characters that do have a number of skills i find that they it it gives them a place in that party that you know i can not every the, the skills are rather limited in fifth ed and i like the fact that i can maybe fill that role of somebody who has knowledge or or can be that uh, party face. I do still try to be the face. That's high charisma and a really high persuasion skill. And I, and I love that you threw in the try because that's also how you fuck yourself over. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and, and just, just with, just, and that goes for anyone. Yeah, true, 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 true. true. It's always try because your dice are more than happy to screw you. So they my will. The, screw me over more than a lot of other people all right so i'm gonna get to that part that the fun part um i want to know how about a concept of a crazy bard that you can come up with um so uh, let's see uh, i'll start with blake this time no i'll go last <laughs> you know, he's saving one? something special i know he's got it all right um david, david. Oh, okay david. You well, ahead. there's a couple of concepts that I have. Like uh, the bard that I'm playing right now, when I was creating it, it was just like, he's going to be this badass tiefling bard playing flaming bagpipes and just, you know, bi <laughs> Billy, you know, Billy Bad Piper, you know? And uh, yeah, my DM kind of encouraged me to go the opposite direction. So next thing you know, I've got a fallen Azimar bard that, it's pretty much Morrissey. So the complete opposite. <laughs> oh my God. I love Every it. day is lying Sunday. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but one of the things that I came up with. Hmm? You need to bring that character on here. I, I would love to. Uh, one of the things I'm playing off of Scott's idea with Erica was a bard with a speech impediment. A stutter. <laughs> he stutters. So so he has to sing constantly. He's just like, so we're creeping up on the orcs, so trying not to alarm them, you know, and just 
complete, completely just, you know, it's a musical <laughs> the whole time that it's playing. Oh, 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 Grapes oh. Robin ran away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 I added this question, I knew this would make for good. Great. I love Barnes. That's a, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Robin ran away. That's, that's ran away. <laughs> exactly. By the way, one of the best parts of Barnes, I think, is your is that ability to make crazy, interesting characters out of them. All right, uh, Scott. Yeah, so, um, you know, I would, I would probably go for an over-the-top, just very, very, I, want, I, I don't want to say arrogant, but I remember, um, oh, we had, I, I forgot who the player was, um, but but he had, a, he played like a rich noble that whenever to solve problems, he would just like sprinkle money out. Um, <laughs> I, I forgot which one, I, I forgot who, I forgot who was the one that did it. But uh, I thought that was an interesting, interesting concept, you know, it was like, <laughs> like that and, uh, you know, drop a couple of coins. Um, and I thought it would be a really like an, like an interesting person to play like a politician that was very convinced <laughs> of his own importance and that he would be a glamour bard, right? So he would be a glamour bard. He would be convinced that he was known and just respected and loved everywhere. But, you know, he, he was, but he, he was really stupid. He was really, really dumb. You know I mean? He had like an intelligence of like seven and a charisma of like 20. You know, just one of these like really weird things to where he kept on saying stupid shit, but people forgave him for it because they just love him. They just love him, you know, and, and I thought that would be an interesting, an interesting concept to play a very, uh, a very political, um, charismatic person that, you know, people wanted to follow, but was dumb as a brick. I love it. I freaking love it. All right, Blake. Your turn. Okay, so, and this is one that I, I, I have, I, I haven't really had a great chance to implement this one, but I, this is one that I would love the opportunity to do. And it's, uh, if, you, if you've ever watched uh, Little Britain, how they have this very, very Zoftig, Zoftig bodice ripper uh, novelist who is, who who is giving recitation of of her of her most most recent novel that's going to be emblazoned with Fabio on the cover? <laughs> <laughs> Joan Collins. I, I was going to say I'm like make her a combination between uh, Anne Rice and Doctor Ruth. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> She's got to do the accent too. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know. Oh. So. So, so, when, so I, when I go and I consult with the king, I tell him, no, 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 you must tell your lady queens that you must not stroke the shaft, stroke the shaft and cups the balls. They like it when you cups the balls. Okay, now I'm going to be uh, uh, standing here and I'm going to be giving you encouragement. Okay, you are inspired. I have inspired you. Go. Oh my God, please do this and bring it on the show. Oh my, oh my God. Gosh. So, you know, I, the, the, the character that I have, this, that I, I started to flesh out with this, it didn't quite go in that direction, but was essentially, it was a half-orc who had been sold into prostitution and was writing her memoirs. Nice. Oh, God. As, That's... you know, as Lady Chatterley's lover. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Uh, I'm going to do one more quick uh, round of thing. Now, we had the adventures. I'm gonna go with quickly in like a couple sentences because we're almost out of time. Single, uh, basically a scenario for a group of bards. Um, all you, right. can't, you can't use band on the run. <laughs> all right, so Blake, how about you? Or do you want me to skip you to last again? Oh yeah, yeah. Let me, let, give me one second. I, I I'm still I'm still thinking about the me, I'm like the next page in fucking uh, Lady Chatterley's book. Uh, <laughs> All right. I got one a scenario. You have an area of a group of bards travels into an area that is experiencing a depth of famine, 
and everyone is so fucking depressed. They can't eat, they can't sleep, they have no money, they have no nothing, and they're dying from, you know, you know, starvation. And these bards are just <laughs> cheery, cheery. That's my that's my that's my scenario. Bards in a uh, bards in a desperate situation. Interesting. Where they have to try to cheer everybody up. That's interesting. They have okay. to try to cheer everyone up. <laughs> All right, David. You how about you? Battle of the Bards. There's a festival and they're vying to be the top bard. That's <laughs> yep. yeah, that's my go yep. at it. Under claw. Exactly. Heavy metal bard with uh, <laughs> voted to the god Thunderclaw. That's a god in one of our D and D groups. So, nice. oh yeah, that's great. So yep, all right, Blake. <laughs> Producer is like docking. Thank you, thank you, Chief. That's right. If you hear me singing Gnomish Rape, that was stolen literally from one of the one of the old players from from our <laughs> local group here. <laughs> Whitney did a wonderful I rendition. Doc and live, man. I mean, Doc and Twisted Sister. And hey! Lime, baby. Yeah, I saw I that. <laughs> but, but but no, my my thought is, uh, uh, I have one. Turn him into Peter Sellers. <laughs> he, he, he he thinks he thinks he's a group. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh my God. Like, wow. like, just yeah, full blown, full blown schizo. <laughs> or not schizo. I'm sorry, that's not schizophrenia. That's dissociative identity. Dis dissociative. Yeah. All right. So is that okay? So that's your idea. Oh yeah. So it is that, that time, or about that time. Uh, so I will go around and we'll do final thoughts. Uh, but my final thoughts are: you guys rocked it. This was a great discussion. Um. So, David, final, uh, th final thoughts. Scott, you were great with uh, introducing the history of the Bard because that's exactly how I started. And when right. I first started playing, he had to do the level in Thief right. and right. Fighter. Yeah, yeah. It, right. it was it was awesome. So, but yeah, this was great. And if you haven't played a Bard, give it a try. I think you'll find it a lot of fun. Piss off your DM. Go ahead. Yeah, that's off your DM. Shatter. Yeah, shatter. Shatter everything. I have to ask <laughs> if, if I piss him off playing Taryn. I don't think so. I was going to say, you, you're, you, have, you have a big, big well, to pull those things, but... I'm, And she and I are not joke tellers. We're not comedians, per se. You know, well, we're I, flautists. <laughs> we are flautists. So stick with the stuff I know. <laughs> all right, Blake, you have final thoughts. Uh, yeah, uh, <coughs> always, always a, uh, if you have someone who's, uh, let's say a strong personality, is, it's always a, a good, uh, good character to see how they em embellish it, put their own stank on it, because there's a lot of, a uh, lot of directions that, that can go, uh, just, Always, always, always uh, interesting to see where they take it. All right, cool, 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 cool. And that, you're absolutely right, it is. Um, I feel like with the amount of role playing you can do as a bard, you can put a lot of yourself into one too. So, uh, Scott. Uh, my final thoughts are uh, it's great to be back. I missed you all, and uh, I hope you're all safe. Glad you're back. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. glad you're back too. And glad for sure. I think you are we're boeing out on us, man. Out on us. You said, Blake, that's great. <laughs> All right, well, at that. Now you're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can see him moving, so he's not frozen. No, you, you froze briefly. <laughs> no, you oh, okay, okay, it was all me. <laughs> oh. So. So anyways, with that, I will say the usual follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, look up our archives on YouTube. Um, everything's under mhoboinc. 
uh, buy our t-shirts, and visit us on Discord. We'd love to talk to you um, about the game, about D&D, about life, whatever. Um, thank you guys for joining us. This, this week's schedule is currently up in the air, so keep lookouts for posts on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, right now we're, the games are planned for Thursday and Saturday. Yeah, if you want a seat at this table to discuss, give a ping, uh, you know, either at Murder Hobo Inc., uh, sorry, Murder Hobo Inc., uh, at gmail.com or DM uh, us on Twitter, which would be, you know, at Murder Hobo Inc. Yeah, gummy time is coming. Frank just told us gummy time is coming back, and that is awesome. Uh, I love the gummy time. Nice. Uh, great thing. Uh, and if you want to see it at one of our games, please don't be afraid. Come join us. It is a ton yeah. of fun. We, our people are very patient with new players, um, and we have, we have only, an only new players, though. <laughs> What's that? Only, only new, new players. players. We're only no. patient with them. Yeah, that's right. If you've been around for a while, well, screw no patience. you. Screw up. Zero patience. Us. But um, you know, we love we love we just love new players. Uh, you know, come and join us. It said you can't do any worse than us. That's for sure. Uh, have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much. So Stay yeah, safe. I don't talk anymore. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Stay safe, and of course, watch. Uh, what's the difference between my dad and? and Everybody anyway. <laughs> And he freezes Thank out. <laughs> Thank you for watching MHI TV. This concludes our broadcast.